In this example, we're going to show how to find a sum of a series using common series represented by a Taylor series. So um, we get to use a few, uh, there are a lot of common Taylor series representation, and we can use those as shortcuts because we see them so much, we have like an, in an intuition of how to find the sum quickly. So in this example, we can see that um, we have the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, 49 to the n plus 2, all over 2n plus 1 factorial. So if I go through all my ta common Taylor series representation, I do see that these are going to be the most common only because of the alternating series, but also because of the denominator. The denominator has a factorial in it. I can see the denominator for cosine is 2n factorial, but the denominator for sine um, is 2n plus 1 factorial. So I do see with a Taylor series representation a common um, factor of 2n plus 1 factorial and also the alternating series part. So I can see that this is going to take a sine form. Now, the only thing I can see here that might be some issue is this x to the 2n plus 1, and I can see that the what I have left over is 49 to the n plus 2. So I will need somehow to get it this 49 to the n plus 2 into this x to the 2n plus 1 form. Notice that x base here is a 49 base here, which is the same as this angle here. So I'm going to highlight that. Let's see if I can highlight that like in a red. Oops. There, this red, this red, and this red. So that angle is whatever that base is going to turn out to be. But I do know that I need an exponent of 2n plus 1. So I'm going to have to make this in somehow a 2n plus 1, which I'm not sure how yet, right? But we can always, we know, I mean, we can play with series. We have, we have very good algebra skills at this point. Let's play with it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take n equal 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. And I'll go ahead and put this uh, over 2n plus 1 factorial, because I kind of know that's going to stick, right? It's the 49 to the n plus 2. And what my goal really is, is to get the exponent to be 2n plus 1, because whatever that base ends up being, I can just plug it in for x. So um, I can go ahead and rewrite this as a base 7 squared, right? It is a perfect square. So then I'm going to go ahead and just take this first part, copy and paste it like so, and then go ahead and rewrite 49 as 7 squared to the n plus 2. And just using some exponent rules, we do know, so I'm going to copy and paste just for um, the example's sake, but I'm going to have to probably, I'll copy and paste this a couple of times. <laughs> um, so I do know that with exponent um, properties that I do know that um, a, a base to a power to a power, we end up, and that's right, we multiply them. So let's go ahead and do that. So then we're going to get 7 to the 2n plus 4. So 2n plus 4. Now I think we are getting closer as as we move forward, right? Because now that 2n is right there. What I don't have is the plus 1. And unfortunately, we have to take the identical form of the common representation because that's the only way we're going to be able to just go from here to, he to here quickly. So what I can do, though, I do know that 4, right, 4 is just 1 plus 3. So I could rewrite this as 7 to the 2n plus 1 and then plus 3 in the back. Why? Well, it, again, I can use the property of exponents. In this case, I'm going to use the product rule, right? If I have same base and product in between, 
I add the exponents. Well, there's the addition. So I can go backwards and say, well, this is just going to be two bases with product in between with these two ex different exponents. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and take one of these again. I'll put it over here. So times, and now I'm going to have two base, right? I'm going to have seven to something up here times seven to something up here. Same base product in between, I add the exponent. So where I add is exactly where I split the product. So I'm gonna go ahead and have seven to the two n plus one times seven cubed. And so at this point, um, we can see that we have we have it, right? We have this piece here. X we can see now is the base 7, but I do have this extra 7 cubed. Well, now I can use properties of summation, right? Property has, a summation has the constant multiple rule. Notice I have a multiplication and a constant. I can go ahead and throw that in front of the sum. So now I'm going to have here 7 cubed summation from n equals 0 to infinity. I'm going to write it similar to the box of negative 1 to the n times 7 to the 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1 factorial. So now I can copy and paste the 7 cubed times. That stays as a constant multiple rule. And now what I have is this big thing which is exactly what the function sine x is in a Taylor series representation, where the base x here is 7. So there's the 7, the x, the x, right? And so now I can rewrite this as entirely this function here, but our x now is 7. And you're like, is she really going to do that? Yep. So 7 cubed times sine, and then the x, which is 7. And that again, that 7 comes directly from that base, just like that. And we can see from right here that this is the correct answer.